Hello, hello, crew. Welcome back to He Loves on TV and Fabulous B, and I'm back with another Fick Reaction video, B. And today, you guys, I'm coming at y'all with a reaction to NBA Youngboy on fatherhood, personal growth, therapy, and more featuring bootleg Kev. So before we get to this video, make sure you do me a big favor, like, comment, subscribe, or ring that bell for you to the channel because Love Crew is the best crew of our crews, and we're going to get straight into it. Hey, this interview is brought to you by our good folks at Imperial Extractions, ladies and gentlemen. Now check this out. If you want a freer right. Oh, it's about to keep um the lip. What's your favorite Disney movie of all time? Um, The Little Vampire. The li oh, you can look um I don't know the little vampire. Tra Transylvania? It's kinda old. It's about the kids. I think he stays in Switzerland or some shit. But, in the vamp but, little It's a Disney movie? I watched it on Disney when I was little. Ma. Oh shit. Ma. I know that Disney so we're show like it has, far it apart has in never. age. Well not too far. Twelve years. I don't age myself too much, but when I was growing up it was Lion King, Aladdin, Toy Story. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones. Wait, so Toy Story at oh? Oh yeah. Thanks, buddy. Damn. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, man. No disrespect. No, it's all good. I'm old as fuck. I get it in wash, man. Yeah, Toy Story's that old. The first one, at least. What's up? How's the brain? Whatever age you is. So, no. Do you want to wear that? The first Toy Story came out probably when I was like, I want to say like eight years old. Maybe nine. So, it's definitely old school. But, I don't know. Um... You got it? Go put it on, man. That's okay. So everybody my fucked up here. You've been a buddy. He's fine. Babies are gonna baby, man. For you, man, talk about fatherhood and how, uh, you know, obviously, you do have a lot of children. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I've been around you to see in a short amount of time that you're a great father. How important is fatherhood to you, man? not really big on it, to be honest. What do you mean by that, you're not big on it? Like you're, you're I mean, you're a family man. I'm here with you, I see it. Yeah, but I'm only, out. I'm only like, in here because you live. Oh, Y'all, well, I be thinking I like, does this man really have like, does this man, I'm not gonna say have time, but I'm gonna say do he really, is he really able to see each and every one of his kids like, you know what I'm saying? As much as like the other ones. Cause sometimes I be thinking like, you know, does it hurt him sometimes when he can't really see his other kids as much as, you know, the other ones since he have so many. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how many kids he have, y'all. I honestly forgot how much, but y'all comment down below how many kids he has, but I know he has a lot and you know what I'm saying? I feel like it can be hard to like try to see each and every one of them, especially you're all the way, he's all the way in Utah and all his baby mamas are in different locations. So I know that's like, that's just like a crazy situation. Crazy topic, cause I'm not the type, like the sugar coat man. But I'm Thanks. four walls all day, every day. When you say four walls, you mean locked in? Yeah. Just honed in on the music? Mm -hmm. Recording? Yeah. You can take the hat, I don't mind. We burn, mm -hmm. we burn the lot, but Emotionally, like, give me this hate. Did inside. Working. No. No matter when watching TV. I'm just sitting there all day. I'm stuck inside just one room. I don't really travel this house like that. So even in your own home, you'll be stuck in one room. Man. I don't know. <laughs> Baby, like, it's a turn. Let him take that. Love that hate. He wants it. You have it. Um so even at home, and you, I mean, obviously we're in a beautiful house right now. You're, you have a beautiful home. You'll still kind of just stick to one room in the house. Yeah. What do you think? Um, why is that? You think, man? Oh no. I. I wouldn't say I'm like. I. I. I wouldn't say I'm going through a lot. I'm just. Me. Do you find yourself? You know, I've heard you refer to the music as, as therapy. I ain't gonna need this hat actually, because this is, this is bright. Um, do you feel like B 
being alone in your thoughts is a form of therapy for you? It's kind of my way of staying sane. Being by yourself, being secluded, relaxing, is it watching TV, is it writing, is it? I don't do no writing. Um, yeah, watching TV oh, and a video game. What is your go-to movie TV show? Like, what about TV shows? Like, what are you watching? What are you binge watching? What's young boy uh, binge watching? Man, I'm boring. That's what you watch. Man, but old shit. What's old to you? Because what's old to you might be. Like, um, I watch The Sopranos. Greatest, maybe top two show ever. I don't even watch TV. Um, I can be watching YouTube videos. I watch The Godfather just back to back. All three? Mm -hmm. Third one's the worst one, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, don't even know. I think it's like one. It's kind of the best to see is growth. But you learn that like, it kind of gave you the thought of, that's why you need to stay dangerous. That's true. That's why, that's why you need to stay dangerous. Um, so you love Sopranos. Yeah. What about Breaking Bad? Did you ever watch Breaking Bad? Oh yeah, I watched that with my wife, uh, um, a couple episodes. Probably, yeah, a couple episodes, I like it. Breaking Bad's crazy. The Wire is another one. If you love Sopranos, I watched The Wire too. Did you finish it? Yeah, I tried it. I watched it twice. The whole like it's me too. Season. Me too. I just rewatched it when the pandemic first started. I showed my wife, and it made me realize like, I don't know. It just got better the second watch. Like Omar Little has got to be one of the greatest uh, like TV characters ever. Like, mm -hmm. who was your favorite character on The Wire? Mm -hmm. A couple years ago, I ended up in a motorcycle. Y'all, this interview is so quiet. I ain't even gonna cap. And now this I interview have a plan is so quiet. Cover for nine dollars a month. <laughs> Bodie, Bodie, man, the story of Bodie, man. Shout out to Bodie, and he lasted so long in the show too. Yeah, he just ain't catch his cut at the right time. He did it, man. That's real. You should. I feel like somebody should do. It could be you. Could anybody should do a song from the perspective of Bodie? Like I think that would be crazy. Mm -hmm. Cause he, man, Bodie was, well, he, like, he hung around. He survived for so long in that show. He had it hard too. He was fucking over on that. For sure. That's dope, man. Yeah, so The Wire is my favorite show of all time. What about uh, video games? What are you playing right now? Watch Dogs, um, Love Watch Dogs. Red Dead, and Madden. Red Dead Redemption is amazing. Um, we were talking earlier about it when you were on your horse, but if you're on Madden, what's your, what, what's, what, what squad are you picking this year? I've been running, I've been running with the Dolphins a lot. Tyree, Tyree Hill is a cheat code, right? Yeah, just, they, man, that, that team is like strictly speed on offense. My son murders me with Tyree Hill every single time. Yeah, we can hold the gun. <laughs> He's like the wide receiver, Mike. So back in the day, Mike Vick, when he was in Madden, Mike Vick was kind of the cheat code in Madden. What's up, man? And um, I feel like Tyreek Hill this year is the cheat code. Uh -uh. Good high five? No. High five? Yeah. Aww. And I'm just having a one year old. My son's 18. My son just turned 18. I got all grown ass. Yeah, yeah. This is bad. Hey, he not, he not as bad as my nephew, though. He not as bad as my nephew. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even gonna catch him. He not as bad as my nephew. Yeah. Yeah, pound it. There we go. If y'all think, you know what I'm saying, he be in too You're much learning your words. You, you want the hat again? You can have it for a sec. It's bright though. Hey, what up y'all? Uh, I'm excited because yeah. I'm going to be always for your ears. Uh, what are you? What are you? It's like, um, I wonder, man, like, you know, when we think of like Mount Rushmore of this rap shit, and like I told you earlier, you've, you've kind of, done something that not a lot of people have done and you've been extremely successful. Wait, where did the baby go? Did he put the baby on the ground? Very shallow business. <laughs> um, without, without being, let me kind of stick into your, 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 your beliefs, <laughs> stick into who you are the whole time. Are you kind of like self-aware to realize that like you are kind of, you are on the Mount Rushmore of like this hip hop shit the last like 10 years. Like you are like 
up there. You are the pock of our generation for so many people. I never seen them sit, so it's like I got a long ways to go. Like, I, I don't know. I just want to go until they see it and it's molded. But who's they? The industry. Fuck. You know what the industry is? That's the people. I think so many people say it. Now, whether or not there are people who put together these end of the year rap lists and these quote unquote tastemakers, you have so many people, real people, going to work every day, taking care of their kids every day who say it. And to me, that's the shit that matters. I do on a regular job sometimes. Like a construction company. So I just sit in the office every day, just all day. Just relax, be a regular person? Yeah. So if you could do any sort of a uh, regular job. It's crazy job, how like in life, like sometimes, some of the times people be like thinking like the celebrities be like so lucky or so happy in their position. Sometimes they be wanting, I feel like sometimes they be wanting the regular, regular jobs too. They don't say that, but I feel like sometimes they be wanting to see or see how a regular job will feel and I feel like People that work at nine to five, they be wanting to feel, they be wanting to see how like being a celebrity feels. Like everybody wants, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just like, I don't know. It's just crazy how you would think that, you know, since they're in a higher position, like they wouldn't even think twice. But sometimes I feel like uh, some celebrities do be like wondering about like working a nine to five or just trying to see how it is to work a nine to five, you know what I'm saying? Just like he said, he he be thinking about being, he said a construction worker or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like ain't nothing wrong with a nine to five. You know, ain't nothing wrong with a nine to five. So if you is working and you just feel down about your life because you're not where you want to be, like ain't nothing wrong with where you at right now because I'm telling you, some of these celebrities be wishing that they're not in that position because, you know, they be having to do a lot of stuff that they don't want to do, too, just like at a 9 to 5. So, it's not really much of a difference. Be having a construction just company? Just fame. Yeah. That's the only thing that's a difference. Could you ever see yourself, like, I mean, retiring? Is that even something that you're 24 years old? You have, I don't even know how many albums at this point. A lot. Could you ever see yourself, like, does... Do you have thoughts about what happens after rap? I'm kind of set on going to jail right now, so I don't really think about too much. Hey, you want me to put you over here? When you say you're, you're, you're set on going to jail, what do you mean? Like going back? Like you think that that's just in your fate? I, I, I hope you don't go back. I don't let it bother me or no shit like that. You create the veggie. You know, you, you make the veggie late. So you... That's kind of where your head's at when you think of the future. Still. That's, that's interesting, because I, I do think... Uh, shout out to Donnie Brasco that's on too right now. Shout out to uh, Al Pacino, all-time GOAT. Well, I think that you are somebody who has an immeasurable amount of influence and moreover power when it comes to this rap shit. Like, I had this conversation, uh, are you familiar with the artist named La Russell? La Russell? He's from uh, Oakland, he does concerts in his backyard. Independent kid. Whoa. Okay, um, but we were talking about yesterday and I was like, his parents you know, there's a few artists in this game who, if they were independent, the baby, but I could the break the music fall. industry and really kind of expose it, right? And you were one of those names. I think it's you, I think it's Drake, I think it's The Weeknd, who really have the power to kind of like shift the industry. You've already done it in such a way, especially when it comes to YouTube. But, you know, you're one of, you, you're one of them, bro. You're him, bro. Like, You know, I think you you you, uh, you definitely have a future outside of, of going, ending up back in jail. Hey, I really like hate this shit. You really like hate? It should take a toll on me. Yeah. My my wife. You kids. What rapping? Just the music industry, being just, famous. Just. I wouldn't blame it on the interview. I thought he was. I thought he was talking about the interview at first. I was like, he talking about the interview. <laughs> 
Cause y'all know why be he don't be giving a fuck for real. But he talking about I guess he talking about rapping in the industry. It's all it's all about you go about it. And I'm not that strong. That's important to uh, be self-aware about, man. I cry a lot. Yeah. Literally. You yeah, I'm at a point I know it's okay. Like my wife, I don't know, bro. It's okay. How, how much therapy have you uh, tried to go to? I know we talked earlier, you've gone to rehab, but therapy is an important um, tool in anyone's box, not just yours, but anybody's box. You know, it's a kind of deal with some, I mean, not everyone's as strong as we try to portray ourselves to be. I, uh, I tried it when I was 18. It was court order, and I, I finished it. Um, yeah, I think the court order shit's different, though. You know? Like, I think you could have... Do you remember... Listen, we're, you're a Sopranos guy. Remember Tony had a therapist? Yeah. You remember that? I thought that she was going to get him killed before, she, I, before I actually finished the show. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. But Tony went to therapy, man, and it helped him deal with so much, because... You know, I always say this, like, for whatever reason, men in this world, we're not allowed to, society doesn't, they frown upon us being hurt. They frown upon us having feelings. We're supposed to hold it together. We're supposed to hold down the kids. We're supposed to hold down our wives. We're supposed to pay the bills. And I feel like if you're the head of your household, if you're the head of your crew, if you're the leader, who do you talk to if you're going through some shit? You know what I'm saying? Do you have that person or you just internalize it, girl, put it out your through family the music? Too, you know? I don't love music to that point no more where I run to the microphone. And no, I don't got that person to talk to. I think everybody should find that person. I think you should you should try to go back to therapy, man. He got a whole wife. He can talk to because his wife. Because I mean, I have it um on this Saturday. Oh, you do? Okay. You got to be able to talk to somebody who doesn't already have kind of like their mind made up about you and who can't benefit off you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get like a you can kind of bear your soul to somebody. So, ma. Ma, I can smoke a cigarette here. He's a mama dude. I can smoke a cigarette right here. I don't give a fuck about this house. Um... I'm trying to move in the middle of the water, kid. Middle of the water? Mm-hmm. Island? No. Like, you want to get a boat? Oh, I guess he asked yeah. it because it's a... Uh... And the only way you come to me if the helicopter fly off that bitch and grab you and come back. I like that. Like, literally, I want to live on the water. Like, bro, I really like this bitch. Like, God, man, this bitch ain't even my playground. Right. Like, I have my own guest shit like that. And other than that, like, yeah, I don't travel this house. That's crazy, man. So for you, like, because for people who don't know, you do, you're very secluded where you are. Um, when you say Great Digger Mountain, like we're literally, there, there's a mountain, you have a mountain. It's your mountain. But for you, like, secluding yourself even more is interesting. Just getting a houseboat, getting a yacht. Hey, if you want to see me, these are my coordinates. Pull up on a helicopter and we ain't talking. I told my wife that last night she asked me how about eat. Fish. I say fish. She say you can eat fish all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. I say I get, I get some food that's shipped to me. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would have to say fish somebody would have to crazy. boat it to you. But that's not. I mean, I don't think that's uh, unrealistic. Are you? Are you like? Um, hey, you could tell that I don't smoke. Like no, don't smoke. Couple days before, I was like, no, I can tell. Yeah, for sure. This is the first time you smoked in this part of the house. But actually, when I was looking for the my clothes, looking for this suit earlier, man, I walked out that fucking studio smoking a cigarette. I had to keep that door open. How long have you smoked? I've been smoking cigarettes since I was seven years old. Damn. Damn. My dad was what like the hell? that. 
My dad tells everybody I've been smoking since I was eight. You want me to give this shit up? My dad got arrested when he was nine. Damn. Uh-uh. Uh he tried to burn he down his own since blood. he was seven? Where was, bro? Heck no. I didn't even like when my mama used to smoke around us, catching secondhand, uh, what you call it? What you call that? That, cause you know, when people smoke cigarettes around you, you can still inhale it and then it could cause, it could still cause, you know, whatever effects cigarettes cause for the smokers. That's why I don't like when people smoke around me. You know what I'm saying? Especially cigarettes, cause you know, you can inhale that. Nah, but seven years old is crazy, like. I smoked, when I was little, like 12 or 13, I smoked like a fake cigarette before, but nah, not a real cigarette, that's crazy. Dad, I think he was, I think this nigga ran away from the army. <laughs> but he can't, you know how you get a home pass, I guess? Yeah. And that motherfucker ran away to New York, New Orleans, cause he didn't want to go back. So I guess during the time, like, as he was at the house, mm -hmm. I used to be watching that nigga smoking cigarettes and every time he throw that bitch out, he'll grab it. Grab it and you smoke what was left? Yeah. Just Damn. Just yeah, I did that one time. My dad threw a cigarette down. Damn I was man. probably like seven. And I remember I picked that bitch up. I took a hit and I threw, I was coughing so much I threw up. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, see, that's what the fuck you get, picking up a fucking cigarette. And ever since then, I was, I was out on it, man. I was out on it. I, I just will be better. I ain't gonna try that shit. That shit's done. It's important, man. Thing. I don't know. And I forget. I, if I get this certain amount of money and, and run and go away, I would. I think I tried like some liquor when I was little, though. It was beer. That shit was nasty. So for you, your interest, like, like, it's almost like if I can get this, get to this certain goal, whatever it may be, you're comfortable with just. Disappearing. For sure, for sure. Once all this behind me, mm -hmm. move to Europe or some shit. Europe is Once crazy. the legal stuff is, is out of your way, yeah, we might not hear from you. All this put behind me, oh, you gonna hear from me. I wonder when that's how I'm We be. don't know where you are. <laughs> I think you always know where I'm at, too. Okay. Is it been. It's been, what, three years now since you've been dealing with the current situation, almost three? Yeah. Is it wearing on you yet, man? I'm sure at times it's got to be tough to kind of just feel confined. I mean, obviously you have a nice place, but it's still... Yeah, but I, I got it better than... It. I got it better than so many people. Mm -hmm. For sure. Who are stuck in their apartment. Who are stuck... Me uh, and my apartment. Are stuck inside a fucking city going to the club <laughs> every weekend. Me? Well, not your yeah, weekend. Club, man. That shit's so boring though. I don't get it anymore. I got everybody, I got, I got everybody approval. Who I love and who I like to be around. That's important. They come when I call. Mm -hmm. um, now I don't wake up in no cell. Now you have a beautiful property, man. Yeah, look yeah. at the right side of things. You got beautiful animals, you got beautiful children, you your wife's here. Mm -hmm. You got a maid, man. Hey, we literally can hit that trail and go all the way behind this mountain. Hey, we gotta stop the interview real quick, man. Shout out to our family at my Um, start a fire, cook some, eat it, yeah. come back. Like survive. Yeah. You ever watch those shows on Netflix where they're naked a and they have to survive times. in the middle it's of It's intriguing. Because you'll see I, how they I, start I fires, you see how they like they'll catch fish, they'll I mean, no, that's so so you might that that might be a nice little side mission for for you just to kinda you know, hey, we're gonna go to the forest for a day. We're gonna camp. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna catch our food. Naked. I had a bobcat jump out on us uh, up, up there one day. A bobcat? What happened? Did, did it run off? Man, that bitch, that bitch tried to get to the can now. That bitch lady tried to run into it. It was me and the dog. Did it run off? Did it survive? I had to look to see where it went. I would see was it coming out the bushes. I'd be worried about kept food. I'd be worried about bears, bro. Have you seen any bears up here? No. I really think I saw a big print before. See, those bears are the ones, because they'll come in the house to look for food. I hope they don't know that. Have you ever watched the that <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio that movie, <laughs> Revenant, where he gets attacked by a bear from behind and he just gets fucking destroyed? No. It made me. Scared of bears forever. I'm you know, I'm an animal guy. I want to. I would like to pet a bear one day. I'm know? scared of their speed. Yeah, I ain't no getting away from this bitch. <laughs> the speed and the force. I ain't no getting away, man. Man. 
Bears be looking so sure. cute though. I just think it's been fed like a goat cut. I just think it's been dope, like, you know, to kind of see how you've been able to do so much from here. You've done so much since you've gotten out and since you've been in your current situation. That kind of would make me second guess a lot though. Mm -hmm. I was blessed to, I was blessed to get a bun and, and to be able to be put in this position. For sure. So I was saying to myself like, bro, if I do this, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm fucked up. You see how they going about me now? So I'm pretty sure if I do anything, like just against my probation, yeah. that's my ass. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, man. They're, they're on top of you, for sure. Mm -hmm. You're definitely, uh, and that's gotta be, that's just gotta be stressful. Cause at all times, you know, you're kind of under a microscope. Uh, now, I try to, try to being on probation kind of for that long right. is crazy, bro. It forces you to, to, to maybe not make certain decisions you would have made. Yeah. Do you think it works? Yeah. Do you feel like um, once all this is behind you, you're going to the same output we're getting? Is that something that we're going to continue to get? Are you going to tour the country? Your fans haven't seen you live for I don't even know how long. I mean, you got to know if you did a tour right now, it's sold out arenas, 52 dates, if, if that's even something you would even want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Is that something you'd be interested in doing? Going and seeing, seeing the fans? A year ago, I didn't, I didn't want to. If I probably got off of it probably would have took all the way to this time of life for me to go on stage. Yeah. That's Steven. I think that's my Chico staring off the stage. Mm. I don't disagree with you. A lot of artists, they, 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 they really have, they, even if they don't want to go on stage, it's, it's, you know, this is kind of how you really make money for most artists. But a lot of artists, they got great ass music, but it ain't gonna go if they don't touch that stage. Right. They ain't gonna go if they not on tour. Mm. You have broke, that's why I was gonna say earlier, like you, you, really are, you know, an enigma when you think of the music industry because, like you said, you, you haven't toured like most artists that are as successful as you are. And uh, you do have kind of like, I think you, you know, you, you, are, you, you have a lot of power, man. You have a lot of influence on, on, on this industry, period. I don't know a lot of people who were dropping music the way you dropped music until you started doing it, you know? That's because a lot of artists' minds fucked. Oh. A, lot of, a lot of artists, they don't play the game I play. They worry about numbers. Oh. I ain't never gave a fuck about no numbers. I'm hey. part of the food chain. Hey, that's one thing to remember. Whether you were trying to be a content creator or a music artist, do not worry about your numbers. Whether you getting two likes two views keep going bro keep going don't worry about them numbers that's what's gonna mess you up and have you like overthinking when you just like oh my gosh nobody's watching and thinking nobody's watching bro just keep going for real stop worrying about the numbers just like yb said hmm. raw material um supply it then the buyer mm -hmm. and that's how that shit add up like that that's how that's how when a nigga talk that shit i can let it whip out a plate <laughs> and they got over 100 certifications on that bitch. Okay. So you have don't, it don't stop there. All right. It Let's don't see. stop there. 100 gold. It don't platinum. stop there. It's like, it's like, man, it's like, oh. <laughs> okay. And what place sell food for? Albertsons. Albertsons, Ralph's. Uh, uh, you walk in Albertsons, you see all that motherfucking meat inside that freezer. You know, down well, all of it ain't being bought. But I can guarantee you, it's one person walking in that store, at least buying. Something from each category a day. Yeah. And it's gonna add up. Mm -hmm. That's the game you're playing. No, I can't be fucked with. I oh. don't disagree. Then that, hey, I always, hey, numbers don't lie. He be so no. serious. They do not lie, man. I mean, everybody knows that. Play with. But you pay attention. There's only no more than five artists that did big numbers this whole year. This is true. Hey, and I guarantee you, out of them five, three of them artists' numbers was bought. 
I think that a lot of that is starting to get exposed. Who buying Who buying Yeah, know. I think a lot of, uh, you know, the stream farms, there's, a, there's an artist that, um, you know, my boy from the label, who's working, because I do radio, so he's, he works, he's working his record. I know my, my, I ain't, ain't not one thing scripted about me. Yeah. I ain't got no, I ain't got nobody inside no label, no. Oh, I ain't got Jason telling me to go about something like this. No, for sure, man. I ain't shit scripted, so I know. Man, man, this shit's, this shit's so real. This shit real, real life reality. Now, I appreciate the real ones are gonna stick with me. They gonna fuck with me. For sure. Yeah, I think- All through my flaws. They gonna run with me. <laughs> and I think, you know, embracing your flaws, figuring out, like, kind of understanding what they are. That's the problem I got with this game today, bro. What makes up a full life? Being there to lend a hand. Being present while feeling our best. Because your help... I'm one of them niggas. I ain't always been a stand-up guy in every situation. Oh, I ain't always been right. That's important to admit. Man, man that's with every fucking man. No, you're right though, like, you know, me being here, had, I, I, you just reached out to me one day. I don't know what interview you saw, Martin, but you just said, ask me, like, do you enjoy what you do? And it was randomly, you and I have never met. Um, and I just hit you like, hey dude, I'd love to talk to you one day. And, you know, we made it happen. So I, I appreciate you uh, opening up your home to me and, um, you know, inviting me out to Utah, man. It is cold as hell out here. <laughs> I almost ate shit on a, I wouldn't call it a snowmobile, it's like a snow scooter. Um, a, a moon, a moon bike, whatever. A moon bike. That shit had me fucked up. My legs are really wet right now. Um, for you, man, talk about just you like- said legs wet. Oh yeah, my shit's all the way up to here. I don't want fucking ass wet, man. <laughs> I mean, we're, we are kind of sitting on a freshly clean couch. Right, right, right in that horse. Yeah, and the couch is not like clean. That's why we're sitting on these. It's damp, for sure. We're, all, we're damp right now. We're just in the snow, 100%. Um, I was going to ask you, man, like uh, somebody who I think you, who is also very anti-industry, but is also very successful right now, and you have such a great chemistry and working relationship. You guys got a couple of songs that I love. is Rod Wave. He is a, a, an amazing guy. He's from St. Pete, which I lived there for a long time. That's somebody who will forever win in the game. Like, mm -hmm. I think he love what he do. He's so good at it, man. And I yeah, think he's so really positive good. and so taking in the people. I ain't no way he could feel. That's real. You've been known to do a collab project here or there. Would you guys ever do a whole, uh, whole tape together? Maybe like a little EP or something? I think that'll be a setback for him. You think so? A setback? My image fucked up. Like, I think I gotta stay in my own lane. That's fair. You guys, you got some great, couple great joints together, though. He's, how often are you, like, discovering new artists? Because obviously you have your crew, you have your label, like, your artists, but are I you... I think they would do good to get on a collab. Do you listen to much other music outside of your own stuff or your own guys? Like, are you tapped into, like, not really. I know about a lot of artists, though, that I think the world don't know about. Well, they, I just say they underground, but I like Yeet. You like Yeet? I was saying, like, that's like Yeet. Okay. Yeet, I don't think he underground no more. He was, but he's not now. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of more he, artists he, like he, this. He's he used to all... He'll be yeah, all it was like TikTok. guys like Destroy Lonely and Yeed and you know, all over, like, Lonely Lord. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I feel like there's a difference between being like underground because you're not necessarily commercial. But I think once you get to the point where you're getting a billion streams, I don't know how underground you could be, you know? Because I think some people still consider you who are like just generic music fans. They might think that you're kind of like underground. Uh -huh. But you're not. You're one of the biggest artists in the world. You know what I mean? So that's because they live in a different world. Mm -hmm. That's true. They not into. They not into nothing like me. Right. I mean, you are one on one, man. I'll say that. I don't think there's any denying that. Does it matter to you? The because you said earlier, when the industry says 
you or that, does, does the recognition of the quote unquote industry from where you're at right now, does it even matter at all? Even if it's a 1%? I'm paid, I don't give a fuck, and that's all I wanna be. I told you, you gotta learn when the jokes is on you, when, you, when you're in entertainment. people on earth because we got an image to keep up. It's hard to be yourself. It is hard to be yourself. Now you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Niggas be want to come across that bitch and talk crazy about a woman, but but what won't? Because they know that shit tear that image down and a lot of people don't like that. So they not gonna speak their mind. And it's a whole lot of different situations like like that's different than that. They be eating people up. But they got this shit down pat. They ain't gonna let nothing play with their image, I guess. Yeah, I think a lot of people get caught up in their image. I think a lot of people get caught up in their social media aesthetic, how they look online. Mm-hmm. It's like, at the end of the day, if you could just unapologetically be yourself at all times, it, it should work out for you, you know what I'm saying? Or turn out bad. I mean, it could turn out bad. I mean, like... God, they are so tired of you just start, starting to feel like, oh, he really a piece of shit. But this nigga ain't got no, no type of more or morals or, or sympathy. But then again, they just don't know, like, you're probably one of the most soft-hearted hearted people walking the earth. One of the most given ever. But all that shit don't matter when their opinion come about. I think society does a really bad job of judging people because mostly we judge people off their worst moments. I'm against society. But think about it, like... I'm just, I just know today, like, hurting people ain't the way it hurt to hurt somebody. Right. Yeah, but I don't give a fuck about that. No, I, I mean, listen, I think, I think people like to judge people off of their low points in life. You might have a one bad no, night, like one bad decision. But I'm like, man, I swear, I, if I had, if, if there was anything to show you, I want you to see all my low points in life. No, you've been very transparent with that. You, uh, I wouldn't want right. you to see right. shit. Right. Uh, you mentioned you went to rehab recently. Um, is that something that has, has you found helpful? Yeah, I really, I really needed it to, and I met some very cool people. And I was accepted in a way I never was before. Aww. So I love, I love, I love that place. Was it in a, like a 12 step meeting? Hmm? Did you do a, uh, like a 12 step meeting? Like a, where you like, yeah, everyone sits down, everyone shares their thoughts. I've been, I've been in a, they, some meetings they, before. They, I think they cleared the house out for me as I arrived, just to let me check it out. Yeah. It's important, man. I think, uh, you know, to be self-aware enough to know, hey, I gotta go, I gotta go see somebody. It's important. I love being high. I think everyone loves being high. It's just what comes after that. (laughs) It's just, it's not the time. Right. It's not the time at all. Yeah, I love being high as well, and drunk and all of that stuff. I've been in my own personal you know, situations with... I'd rather get high than get alcohol, drunk man. all alcohol the time. Alcohol is bro. Because you, you, you'll be having the best night of your life and it goes left like that. Tell me about it. Man, have you fucked up? Now you go to Cuarto Cuarto. Uh, I, like, I love to pop that shit when I'm, when I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. I love to you start pop drinking, you start to pop that shit. We be you, like, seeing. Like, they try to tell you about yourself. Oh, fuck <laughs> you. Would you say like... Uh, you know, every, everybody's complicated. But a lot of times when we see you online, right, you, and, and you're popping your shit, is it mo- like, let's say, not necessarily recently, but would you be like drinking at the time, most of the time? Or? No, no, that's 100% me. I mean, listen, alcohol that's, brings out the truth. No, no, I'm talking about I'll be sober. Oh, okay. That's 100% me. I, I rarely let them catch me at. That's real? No, nah, for real, for real. That 100% me. He be switching. Is Fuck it, that's how I'm really feeling. I love you. That's really genuine. Who are somebody, uh, you know, you've had some big homies in the rap game. Obviously, Bear Man, uh, Kevin Gates, 
go on and on, shout to Gates. For some people who consistently check in on you and your well-being that aren't necessarily trying to get a feature, aren't trying to, you know, get something from you. Is there anybody at all in the music industry who? who I don't know? really talk to nobody, but back to a uh, 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 stun most of the time. I can tell, well, I can tell you about these niggas though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just saw her. Yeah, you just saw her meeting somebody and finding out that it ain't, it ain't. It ain't who you think they are. Nah, fuck no. Then a nigga, a nigga, a nigga, a nigga get the mad, you nigga get mad, I throw you, you bitch, and nigga get the speaking on, on you like, 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 you ain't, like, you ain't who you say you is or something. Dang. What are you talking about? So Birdman's been pretty consistent, you know, of making sure he... That's the fact. Yeah. A legend. Obviously, I'm sure you learned a lot from him. I mean, you know. You talking about Kevin Nance on that one? Literally. Shout out to Birdman. How's the, uh, I know you just dropped an album, you just dropped another single. Um, with your current situation, I know you got like a one of one type of situation. Um, how long is, 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 is your deal with, with, with Motown, Capital? Because you could burn through it. I feel like you could burn through a record contract in like three months if you, mm-hmm. if you really wanted to, like a traditional one, obviously. But that's the problem, that's the problem, like, I'm. I'm, I'm caught up right now. Like you, so you're free to do whatever you want, obviously. Yeah, but I ain't trying to give out shit free, cause now nah, I see they ain't trying to take care of me. Babe. So everything yeah, gotta be counted for, or drop me. And let me show you some shit. Babe. Would you ever consider going fully independent with, your, with building infrastructure and a team out where you can just say, I'm gonna do me? My life ain't set up that way. Mm. I'm down for it though. I can I ain't gonna feel. But shit. Like one day maybe. I thought he'd be dropping some songs or albums that he wanted to be able to I, I want that money, man. I mean, money's important, man. Yeah. I mean, that's why we do what we do, right? Sometimes that's the only thing. And in some situations, that that's the only thing that got your back. The money. Your money. That's some real shit. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you having me out. I appreciate you for coming. Bro. I had a great time. With you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it right here, y'all. This was a silent ass interview. This interview was so quiet, but I like how he was just calm. You know, the other interview I reacted to, um, before his interview, he was like, it. I don't know. It was like he was just switching. Like, I don't know. It was like he was. Calm, then he got mad, but this interview, he was just calm the whole interview. Probably because of that cigarette. That cigarette kept him level headed, you know what I'm saying? Or he was just chilling. But y'all comment down below y'all thoughts and opinions. Also, comment down below some more videos I should react to in the future. Until then, I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.